I shouldn't have done that. Now I'm busy. Hello, my name's Ina, and I do art stuff and things. So welcome, or welcome back if you're coming back, which is awesome. Now, if you haven't seen the first part of this, I'll link it somewhere in the video, um, and things will make more sense. Not all the things, but some things. Uh, and as a quick recap, this is a series where I show you how I created this portrait. Now, last episode was all about line work. And this part is all about the backgrounds. Now, backgrounds have been an afterthought in my process for quite some time. Even if a thought at all. A lot of my portraits have no background at all. Some have just blobs of colour. Um, I do get creative now and then, but often I would just paint in this rectangular colour block, which isn't the worst idea. I mean, it's not creative, but it is aesthetic. However, recently I found a method that turned up my background game, and that's what I'm going to share with you here. Uh, in this video, I will cover materials used, the masking, and painting in the background. So, let's go! This is the outline we did in the last video, and we will need that. In addition, we will need um, masking tape. I'm using basic painter's tape that you would get in any hardware store, but you can use washi tape. Personally, I don't think it's secure, but it rips paper just the same, and it's expensive, so it's not from me. Masking fluid. I use this Winsor Newton um, one. There are others, I'm sure, but I only ever use this one and never plan on changing because, well, it's masking fluid. A brush for application of said masking fluid. Make sure it's a cheap shitty one that you do not care to destroy because, well, you will. One thing I did not include because I forgot uh, is the masking fluid rubber or rubber cement. It looks like this and I got this one at a local art store for like four bucks. If you struggle getting the fluid off with your fingers, this will do the job very nicely. I did a quick short on using it and I'll link it somewhere. Watercolor paint. This is my Winsor Newton Cotman set. I love it, but I heard mixed opinions. A large, flat wash brush. You can use pretty much any large brush for this, but flat shape of this one is how I'm hoping to create the effects, so it all really depends on what you are planning. Salt. Optional. I did not end up using this. Uh, at this point I only had a loose idea what I was going to do, but it is better be prepared. Extra paint. Also optional, I thought I'd throw in some gold. This is Schmincke Harm tube. I buy random tubes of paint now and then just because I want to, not because I need to. And this is my turquoise. It's Fallow, Fallow, Fellow. I think this is the first time I ever had to say it out loud and I have no idea how to say it correctly. Why is it diluted in the ramekin? Well, I was in an art store, I grabbed a tube of green paint, I looked again at the tube on the train and it was turquoise. I am nothing wrong with that, except now I have two. And that's just too much turquoise. So I thought I'd use some and then I got too much out and now everything I do is going to be turquoise forever and ever, including this one. So lastly, water. I'm only going to use one jar for this. And just like that, we're on to masking. I did not leave a lot of room at the top, so I'm going to match the rest of the border with the top one. You don't have to evenly space your borders or even have parallel lines, but I felt like it would be best here. In terms of the method, this is not something I came up with. I saw an artist I really like do this on YouTube and I thought, fantastic, I will never paint backgrounds any other way again. The artist is called Kellex Loops, and I will link his channel below because you've got to see his stuff. It's simply magical. Okay, let's tape the border. You can tape it to the surface. However, I like my painting to be mobile, so I will not be doing that. I just fold the tape over itself, so it's out of the way. I do not want to tape it over the pad either because it will be a nightmare to remove. Make sure it sticks very well and there are no bubbles because paint will get into the bubbles. You don't want that. Now that the border is done, I'm checking the painting area for any residual graphite and removing it. And next we're going to mask the portrait. 
I do not know what I'm going to do with the bottom part yet. I shall worry about it when I get to it. First, I'm going to use the tape to mask most of the portrait. You need to make sure that the tape overlaps and smooth it out to prevent bubbles um, because you don't want any paint leaking in. At this point, it looks like we're crafting, not arting, but there's nothing wrong with crafting. This reminds me of Papier Mache as a kid. Remember that? So once the bulk is covered, we need to take care of all the edges. And that's when we bring out the masking fluid. I do not know why, but I used to shake it before use. Don't, don't do that. It froths and you'll end up in a frothy mess. Just go straight in. The aim here is to cover all the areas that the tape didn't. Try and stay within the lines, but if you go over, don't worry, it's masking fluid. You can remove it and apply again. Oh look, I made a whoopsie. But don't worry about it. All I did is wipe it off with my finger, wait to put the rest to dry, and then reapply it. No big deal. You want to cover all the tape edges so that the paint does not get in between. Sometimes it still does. Don't be discouraged. You can always incorporate or cover up the leakages. And now we get to the point where I have to work out what to do with the bottom. And um, after a quick ponder on whether I can pull off a smooth transition from skin into the background abyss, I decide no, let's not get crazy and close that neckline and tape it up. At this point, you will want to walk away and let it dry. It's pretty fast drying, but because we have all these nooks and crannies of the tape, uh, just walk away for at least 30 minutes. I once wasn't patient enough and nearly ruined my favorite brush, so... Patience, hotshot. Patience. Through the power of editing, however, the time to paint is now. Get your paints, your water, and your brushes, and let's go. Good thing about this method is that you can get loose and creative, and if it does not work out, and you create hot garbage, paint it black, throw some salt on it, or don't, and you still will have a pretty impactful background. So it's a win-win. What I'm going to do here is first paint in the t-shirt. It's black and there are no folds. So I'm just going in with some water and Payenne Grey to start with because there will be no defined bottom and I don't want it to be too stark to begin with. As you can see, I'm taking care to stay within the lines of the shoulders and then just going for it like Tom saw at the fence. Now I'm bringing in my trusty turquoise and without too much thought, working it into the gray. And now I'm adding some gray and some black into the turquoise to darken it. And then applying to the rest of the area, kind of intuitively. Laying down color just in a wax on, wax off motion, making sure I leave some paper peeking through because I want the shoulders to be defined uh, and I am going to darken the tops, leaving some space right above and around the shoulders. Now I'm just bringing in some black and adding darkness in places. And because I want maximum contrast with the portrait, most of the darkness I will be adding around the head and hair because that will make the red of the hair pop. Now I have some options of what to do with the areas I've just left white. I can leave them, I can add the gold to them, I can go rogue and add some opera rose to it because 
reasons. And that's what I did with a little prayer and here goes nothing. And it worked pretty well, in my opinion. As you might or might not know, and as I keep going on about, but watercolour dries lighter than what you might think. So I let the whole thing dry before considering where to go with this next. As suspected, the shoulders are kind of lost, so I'm adding pure black to darken them and make them stand out. I'm using lamp black for this. Uh, I also have ivory black, but I don't think it works as well um, for this one. It's a bit less black. What I'm doing here is just adding some black where I feel it needs to go and then um, doing some variation with the brush using the side of the brush for a variety of strokes and um, using dry brush for slightly more textured strokes, basically experimenting. I'm going to use some of that gold after all, and I'm using it mainly to bring out the shoulders and add um, some to the lighter areas for interest. If you use a very dry brush, it creates uneven broken strokes that just work in this scenario, in my opinion. Hopefully by now you can see that this can be a playground for experimentation, and you can just go nuts with colours, different brushes, brush strokes, wet on wet techniques, you can dabble with salt, and if you want to get really fancy, you can bring in gold or silver leaf into it. Not that I would do that for a practice piece, but... You get it, the sky is your limit here. If you agree, please like this video to help the channel grow. I don't know how, but they say it does. I don't know who they are, but it's been said. Obviously, you have to bear in mind your main subject, which I have here, because I just know that red hair would look good with turquoise, and everything looks good with black. The pink was a gamble, but there is not a lot of it, and it can always be adjusted at the end if needed. Now, let it dry, and now we are at my favourite part of the process, the peels. Let's face it, this is the only reason I'm interested in this technique. Not really, but really. The only thing to note here is that you should take care when peeling, unless you're using the arches paper, which I am. So I'm just going for it here. Any other paper is likely to rip. I ripped Lindsay Newton paper with washi tape. That's the 300 GSM 100% cotton paper. So be careful. But if you do rip the paper, don't despair. Not all is lost and it's all going to be fine. As you can see, this was a successful operation and only a couple of tiny specks got in. They will not be noticeable in the final portrait. I will not be removing the frame tape at this stage because I am messy and it's very likely I will mess it up during the painting. Also, I might want to adjust the background once the portrait is done, so we're leaving it. And so the background is done. In the next video, I'll take you through my process of painting the skin. So I'll see you next week, or in a minute, if you're watching this from not so distant future where next video is already released. Thanks for watching. Bye!